Well, I'm back in my studio. It's a few days after my visit to the Grafton Common, and I think I've decided on which painting I want to try. So I'm going to switch cameras and get going and hopefully have something fun to show you. I have chosen the train tracks scene that I sketched on location. Here's my original set location to kind of get myself in the right frame of mind and what, what I was thinking about as far as being my distance from the scene. Um, I took some photo references of it on site and I also have it ready to go on my camera so it allows me, allow me to zoom in and kind of really fine tune if there's any details I am missing from just a photograph reference. That's the beauty of working with a, a cell phone. I've already lightly sketched out my painting so far, what it would probably be on my watercolor sheet here. I might type it down, I'm not sure yet, as I saturate my paper. I'm using an, a 2 h pencil here to make it my lines very, very light. Some artists sometimes make a very complicated drawing, whereas I like to do a lot of the, have the, the paint do a lot of the talking for me. The order in which I'll proceed will be, I'll do the sky, then things in the middle ground, and then the foreground, and then at the finality, I'll come back in and add in some more of my opaque areas to make sure I, I, I build up that color contrast value. So that's the order I'll work in, and I'll do my best to kind of follow along in my video in some different stages, but I'm ready to get going. I'm, I'm excited. I'm about 10 minutes in so far, and as you can see, I've covered quite a lot of the canvas or the watercolor paper with a light, light wash. Now the difference between a wash and an opaque painting at this point is I'm trying to make sure I can, number one, preserve sections of the canvas or the watercolor paper that I want to be white. Um, and also I want to make sure that some of my colors will come through this, through the, the, allow light to pass through the paint and actually showcase the, the texture of the paper itself. So right now it's just about establishing middle tone values loosely. I'm not going to add any details until I can come back into it at the end and really heighten in some of these docs, but you can see, see as I'm taking a break here, um, where some of the values in reference to my, my photograph are showcasing. A lot of the light greens and oranges and yellows and things like that you're seeing in here, again, I'm, I'm using a lot of water, I'm establishing all my painting inside my palette, diluted down with water, and it won't be till the end where I go back in and I, I use a more of an opaque paint, meaning I, I drop my brush into the paint itself, a little, little less water, and really go with my darker values. And that's the thing about painting. Sometimes it doesn't really come into, it, it doesn't look great until the end, but you just have to trust the process. So I will continue. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for just another minute because as I start to add in some of my middle tone and darker values, um, I'm worried that I'm going to start getting too opaque, something that I can get, get away from you very quickly when you're working in watercolors. I still want my colors to be transparent at this point, let the, the light pass through the pigment themselves and showcase that you can still see the actual surface of the paper. Um, as we, we're going to wait for it to dry and start to lay it on top of it now instead of working wet into wet. Something I also want to point out is when you're on site at a location, when you're plein air painting or you actually get a chance to visit it, um, you get a chance to see a little bit more of the topographical sense of what you're, what you're, you're dealing with. And with these train tracks, they are recessed down a little bit lower, small embankment on the right hand side, a little embankment on the other side. Um, I want to make sure that I use directional strokes to kind of showcase that. Train, is, train trucks being led into the distance, directional strokes will lead you down into that area. Maybe this parking lot area, this road over here is being led to that direction. Establishing those, those opportunities right now so I don't, it doesn't get away from me and later on when I come back in, I'll recognize what I should, should be doing. So with that said, the next time I probably stop the video and talk about it, there should be a, little bit more, a lot more painterly look to it. Um, but right now I might take a break and uh, come back to it tomorrow. Well, I've added the final detail to it, and I think I'm ready to throw it in a frame and see if I've done it justice. Well, it's in a frame now. Did I do it justice? Well, that's up to you to decide. I know I had a lot of fun painting it. When I look back at that original inspiration, looking down those railroad tracks, whatever caught my eye, this is what we ended up with. So now I need you to get out there and do some drawing and painting yourself. 
a lot of fun. Don't overthink it. Just grab a pencil, grab a paper, and start drawing. Thanks for watching.